the world is getting smaller. Growing up in a fishing town outside of Manila, I never thought I'll have the opportunity to be able to live outside of my country. It is now the information age. The amount of data that's available for us to review has exponentially increased. I've come to learn that they're now using drones to inventory drones. There is probably a lot of talent. It seems like everybody wanted a result, but nobody wants to invest. No one really knows what's happening in them. The fight on cybersecurity is, should be no one's fight alone. Hello, welcome to another episode of the World of Audit. Today, we're joined by Emmanuel Manalo, who is Internal Audit Director at the SD Lauder Companies. Emmanuel has more than 16 years of experience in the audit profession. He started at PwC in the Philippines before moving to EY in Singapore, and then moving on to work for the likes of Tyco, Johnson Controls, Visa, and SD Lauder in New York. Thank you very much for joining us, Emmanuel. Pleasure is mine. Happy to be here. So we have a lot to talk about um, and a lot of different avenues that we can we can go down. I guess to begin, and I like asking every audit leader this question, um, what attracted you to audit in the first place as a profession? Yeah, it's an inter interesting question because no one grew up saying, I want to be an auditor. Uh, you know, more than often you hear them say, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, the journey started for me when I was recruited to join a leadership program back when I was at the University of the Philippines. And it was organized by a conglomerate, a conglomerate in the Philippines called Ayala Young Leaders Congress. And what they've done is to identify the top students across the country and provide a leadership program. And after the program, they give you uh, an internship within their companies. And I was lucky enough to do an internship, an internal audit. And since then, I didn't look back. I just took it head on. After I graduated from university, I joined the firms and audit has been my life. Fantastic. And after, so you obviously joined uh, EY and, and spent some time there before moving to Singapore. Um, and since then you've, you've relocated to to the United States. So you, you've got a lot of international experience in different cultures, different, not just different geographical cultures, but business cultures as well, and, and behaviors, processes, issues. Um, what key benefits have, have you kind of experienced from gaining that international experience that you find valuable today in, in your career? I think, you know, the world is getting smaller. Um, a lot of us are traveling for, for work or to pursue our dreams and ambitions. Um, if anyone asked me whether, you know, being living outside of my home country um, has been so beneficial for me, I would absolutely say yes. Um, growing up in a, you know, a fishing town outside of Manila in the Philippines, I never thought I'd have the opportunity to be able to live outside of my country. Um, and now a couple of years looking back, it's really uh, propelled my growth as a person, as well as a professional of having those exposure within different culture, as well as business practices. Um, oftentimes people ask you your point of view for a particular matter. And I guess living in Asia or working in Europe and living as well here in the U.S. gives you a more holistic perspective on how certain issues would be perceived within those geography. And so I would say there's really a lot more benefit of living within, you know, outside of your home country than 
saying. And that's my uh, personal point of view. Fantastic. It is, it is quite inspiring, really, for a lot of young professionals to look at that and see that if they have the opportunity to be a part of a leadership program, if they have the chance to uh, be challenged and learn from that, that they really have to throw themselves at it because, I mean, what it can lead to is huge opportunity on an international scale. Um, you know, if you, if, you, if you were to think, had you not taken that opportunity, you know, you wouldn't be here today. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic thing that they have that. From your first experience in audit, how, how has audit changed from your first kind of year to, to now? Yeah, it has changed a lot. Um, and I would like to say that, you know, I wasn't born yesterday too, right? So there's a lot of years in between when I started and where I am now. But I would say within those period, there's so much growth within the business context as well. Um, it, it is now the information age, as they say. So many things has been digitized. And so the approach on how we review things, uh, the amount of data that's available for us to review has exponentially increased in the last five years or so. And so the approach to auditing when I started, which is basically you knowing the policy, reviewing documents, physical documents, to make sure that they're compliant with it, is, you know, could be a thing of the past. It could still be seen in some of less advanced um, businesses, I would say, and probably in growing economies. But in more advanced um, countries like the U.S. and in the Western world, those things are done, everything is done automated right now. And so the approach to reviewing things has to change significantly based on the changes in the business. So with, with the introduction of data analytics and the ability to review huge data in a much quicker time um, than it used to, I mean, I guess it used to take someone weeks sometimes to, to go through some data that now takes seconds, really. Um, do you think that now means that for younger auditors, the development they should be focusing on has shifted to what it maybe was when, when, when you were younger? So, you know, it was CPA when, you know, it's always been get your CPA uh, or chartered accountancy um, and, and that will be a fantastic start for you. Do you think now with data analytics that, that the value of the CPA or, or chartered accountancy has maybe decreased and more having more technical uh, abilities or, or understandings of data analytics is something that's more valuable? I would like to think that there's a lot of value that is that comes with a regulated profession, such as CPA or chartered accountant. And it takes you years to study those skills as well as you know, the ethics required to be able to do those things. It's probably the right time to update the curriculum on what it takes to be a CPA or a chartered accountant by incorporating more technology-based auditing, such as data analytics, uh, rather than refocusing the background that is required for these auditors. But I could see like in the in you know the long term that because we already have existing auditors who are in their role, it's a matter of upskilling those existing auditors. And then for the younger generation, it's having a different curriculum to fit the need for the future. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. That's a very interesting approach of um, the profession has developed and advanced, but in some aspects, the certifications maybe haven't caught up yet. And uh, do you think that's something that will happen moving forward? Do you think that they will change the curriculum and have it more technology focused? I will be surprised if they don't. No. Um, you know, as you said earlier, it could bring um, to having that professional certification outdated if they don't update themselves with the pace that the business or the industry is changing. 
Do you, do you think moving forward as much change as there's been in the last five, ten years in the audit prevention, do you think we should expect the same amount of change moving forward and that it will continue to develop and grow? And if you do, what what do you think those changes might be? Yeah, I mean, um, there's a lot of new technology that's happening, right? I, I've came to learn that they're now using drones to do inventory count. And looking back, wow. they used to climb pallets to do inventory count when I was a young auditor. Um, blockchain is another frontier where you probably don't need to send confirmations anymore. Um, I remember when I was starting as an auditor, that's one of the topics that we discuss on how you confirm accounts receivable or accounts payable. But now with blockchain, because the data is immutable, that is not necessary anymore. And the other frontier that I think could be used in audit is machine learning and artificial intelligence. Right now, the industry is limited to auditing what's in machine learning and artificial intelligence. But if we could progress into a state where we use it to audit, I think that would be the future. When auditing is not just looking at historical data, but projecting what could happen and probably prevent any fraud from happening. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you, do you, think, do you think the development of technology will reduce the need, this is quite a loaded question, will reduce the need to have the business on board with audit? And, and I'll, I'll really explain what, what I mean by that question, is that everybody knows that it's a, it's a constant, um, it takes constant effort to keep engaged with the business and to, to maintain a partnership with the business so that you're viewed correctly and you're viewed as, as a, a valuable asset to them rather than a, a hurdle or internal placement, as, as some would call it. Does data analytics and the use of technology technology and the develop, development of that, will that potentially reduce the need to have that constant engagement with the business? Because there, there will undoubtedly be less travel that, that's required. There will undoubtedly be um, less face-to-face -face requirements with the business. Basically, what I'm saying is, is data analytics taking over the actual role of the auditor and the, the bridge between the business and audit itself. That's an interesting proposition, I would say. And as a data analytics professional myself, right, I've built, in, throughout my career, I've built the data analytics profession um, in some other companies. So I am a strong proponent for data analytics. What I would say, though, is it will never, at least in this lifetime, I guess, replace the value of an auditor. Because the models, the scripts, would always have to be updated based on what you're seeing. There's always a feedback mechanism to make those data analytics programs smarter and more efficient and effective. And so I would say an important component of data analytics is the validation process. So what the scripts or the machine outputs, someone has to evaluate them. And that's where the value of an auditor is. And someone who has the training and the skills to spot where the irregularities are, it's in. It's very useful in deciding how the model works, as well as to how about how to evaluate the results that comes out of it. Okay, and what what um, what key points do you think are important to remember when engaging with the business and maintaining that that good relationship? Because a lot of the um, complaints I, I hear from all the directors or from all the professionals when I'm, I'm speaking to them is the in certain business areas they're still heavily challenged and they're still heavily um, or strongly looked at as a problem that the business need to overcome and then hopefully in a few weeks everything will be okay and the auditors will be gone you know how, how do you engage with the business and maintain that strong partnership I think that's the key point to what you're saying, right? There should be a partnership. I've seen many um, internal audit organizations where there really isn't a strong partnership, 
in a sense where they do not understand what is important to the business. And so sometimes it's a matter of refocusing your the risk that you review as well as the recommendations that you put forward to the table. Because if you are highlighting recommendations that are non-value adding, then the business would not see the partnership working for them. So to a certain extent, it requires you to elevate the conversation to make sure that the business sees you as a value adding partner to them. Um, and you know, to a certain degree, a lot of audit organizations uh, drop you know, some of the low risk issues that they identified and put it as a verbal recommendation and only put forward those moderate and high um, risk issues that they identify. And so the, the conversation is definitely higher level and very focused on the organizational risk. You know, one of one of the audit directors that I was um, I was speaking to, uh, he stated that for him one of the key components of this was to be seen before the audit, um, the business to allow the business to 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 see you and speak with you and have access to you as, a, as an audit professional, but also an employee, um, before you come into their business to to conduct an audit, um, and and he he found that. By doing that, when you do arrive, the view is that we're auditing ourselves, you're not auditing us. And it's very much a, a collective experience to, yes, we have to get through this, but we're doing it together for the greater good. And nobody really wants you to have big issues or fail something or um, you want to pass. So it's it, it's very interesting to hear what you, uh, you had to say regarding that. You've been at SD Lauder for a few months now. Um, what key differences are there from auditing uh, a business like SD Lauder to, say, security systems business? There's a lot of similarity, and there's also nuances, I would say. And the similarity is in the objective of what you're doing as an auditor, which is to provide assurance to the audit committee, as well as the shareholders, that either a process or the company overall is working you know, as expected or could be more efficient, depending on your recommendation. The differences lies in the risk, because as an auditor, you're required to have a very good understanding of the business risk. And so auditing a security system company have different business risk compared to auditing someone in the manufacturing space or financial services. So an understanding of the business and that industry is very important. But the overall objective of auditing, I guess, remains the same. Some, some audit careers and, and experiences are very, very different. Um, you see many people coming from uh, no audit background that have, have worked in different parts of the business and they then rotate into audit with huge business knowledge of, of their company. Um, and then there's, there are other people like yourself who started uh, within the big four, um, worked with different clients, grew, developed, moved internally and, and took things from there. I know there's no right path um, to this, but... What benefits do you see there being on both sides? And do you think having that, that that big four experience does help to propel auditors forward in their career in the future? I would say that having a big four background allows you to be more um, focused on learning because you move from one client to another. You have to catch up in terms of understanding their business. And so your learning ability, your skill to learn quickly and as fast as you can is definitely different when you started at the big four. On the other hand, I would see the value of someone starting from the business because they have deeper understanding of the organization as a whole. And even, you know, auditing requires, requires a lot of relationship building. So if you started within the company, you're deep-rooted in there and they viewed you as one of their own rather than someone external coming into the business. Sure. And I guess a lot of the the reasons that 
people will leave the big four to move into businesses, you know, they often want to work closer with the business over a longer period of time, which is, is very understandable. And they also want to have rotation uh, opportunities in the future. You know, years ago, it seemed that the auditor was a career. Being an audit professional was a career. And, and as times have moved forward and changed, it's very much a, a place for a lot of you know senior auditors, audit supervisors, and, and also junior to learn, develop, and then progress. Do you think rotation should be mandatory in audit? Or do you think that career auditing for everybody should be available in every environment? I do have an issue with being mandatory. I think what companies do is to enable um, people to have the opportunity to move if that is what interests them, right? To have a mechanism to do a rotation outside of the outside of internal audit, and as well as people from the business to join audit for a short period of time. Right? It goes both ways. But to make it mandatory to have a career path of, let's say, do a strategy role, do an audit role, do a marketing role, you end up doing things that does not really interest you. And so I think the skills as well as people may not be optimized if it's a mandatory step they needed to do. Whereas if people are genuinely interested in doing that role, I think they will do better. And I would definitely agree with that. Um, and I work with many, many companies around the world where uh, the rotational structure is different. In some instances, it's, it's set that way, um, which, you know, to the people that they hire and recruit is suitable because only people who want to rotate and do not want to stay in audit will, will work there. But, um, you know, some other companies I work for give the option and it allows more progression uh, vertically as, as well within audit, um, which I think definitely gives professionals a different viewpoint of the profession, taking on more of a leadership role um, and to help mentor senior auditors as well through that, through that space. Um, what do you think in terms of in terms of audit and the key risks that we're facing today, with, with audit being a very fluid profession and, and objectives every year change, um, what, what are the key challenges facing the audit profession at the moment? I think we touched on it a little bit earlier in the conversation, right, where we say the business is changing, there's a need for the profession as a whole to change as well. And so I would say there is probably a war on talent on people who are able to adapt to the changes in the business. And so that is a challenge. Also, there are many you know, changing requirement to the internal auditors as well. Expectation from shareholder, expectation from management, yet the budget and the resources remains the same. It seems like everybody wanted a result, but nobody wants to invest. Um, and it's true in a lot of organization. So I'd say those two are probably the biggest challenge that the industry is facing right now. Um, you know, with having a lot of requirement from different regulators and shareholders, as well as finding the right talent to solve for what they're needing in the organization. Do you think it's because typically with new technology, especially where it relates to business, they are there's, people are often afraid. And it, it seems to me that even with huge evidence to back up what this technology can do, um, because it can't physically be seen or it can't be put into numbers and finance, it's very difficult for people to buy into. Would you? Is that from your experience as well, why it's very difficult and why some companies aren't keeping up with others? Um, with their investment in technology and, and analytics as well. Yes, I think, you know, I could even blame some of our um, management models where everything is measured in ROI. How do you put an ROI to a data analytics tool? Can't really, other than it makes your work more effective because you're reviewing, 
you know, basically every transaction. And it also gives you a better assurance. But in terms of financial, adding financial value to that, it's very hard. So quantifying a return on investment on such technology um, would be a challenge. Uh, and so, you know, as well as it's hard to communicate a tangible benefit of such investment, whereas the qualitative uh, improvement for the function as well as for the business is something that you need to communicate clearly to management to get that buy-in and support. Are there specific areas of the business where, um, you know, where audit has typically is able to add more value? Is it always commercially based? Is it is it some is it something else? I would say it's actually two things. Whether in an area that is so highly regulated, they has to comply to it, or in areas where there's so much uncertainty, and that's where you really put value uh, as an auditor, because you need someone independent to take a look at the process, whether we establish something that complies with the regulation, or because there's this new risk, whether we are built, whether the business is built to address those risks. And so whether it's a clear-cut process or it's uncertainty, I think the extremes brings the value of an auditor. Okay, fantastic. And would that change, would the specific value areas for audit change by industry? Yeah, I would say so. So where, so, so in a company like ST Lauder, I mean, where, where would you see audit being able to add the most value and make the biggest change? I would say a lot of, you know, it really depends on our strategic goal as a company. So right now we're really big on our retail and like the internet of things. And so audit should follow that strategic growth initiatives and try to bring value where new risk could be um, identified or new opportunities to be more efficient in the process could also be brought to management attention. Hi there, me again. I just wanted to take one moment to talk to you about My Job Search, which is a self-help ebook I've created to help you manage your own recruitment process from the very beginning of creating your CV and understanding what you want out of your career, through the middle section of interview preparation and tips, right to the very end of negotiating salaries, and potentially dealing with counter offers from your current employer. Now, this is going to be available on Amazon. The link's going to be in the description below. And if you don't have a Kindle, don't worry, you just need to download the app. Until next time, bye bye.